welcome to this brief discussion of a project that uh, that we think the community is ready for and that will really be a great benefit to this part of the state. There are four of us sitting here in my living room. I'm Rick Moraine, Sid Jones, Dr. Dan Kinney, and Chris Deal. And we're going to talk to you for a few minutes about this proposal for an upgrade to our facilities. Yeah, the idea kind of came from a, an experience that Chris had, and it has mushroomed since then. And uh, we're going to talk to you a few minutes about it, about the promise and the potential for this proposal. It's got some legs already in the community, and we'd like to explore that with you. We want to make sure we're all on the same page, and that's we all do have the same page. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to use this this cheater page <laughs> to make sure we get in everything that we want to get in. And I'm going to start with Chris. Uh, Chris, the idea came from a, a visit that you had. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah. So uh, uh, about a year ago now, uh, I was I was lucky enough to be uh, part of a group called Leadership Iowa and a group of 40 individuals and we spent a year traveling the state. Once a month we'd go to a different community and we'd look at a, uh, a different issue within the state. Uh, and so, uh, for example, for one of the first months we were in Sioux Center looking at agriculture in the state. We spent some time in Des Moines looking at government in the state. Um, and about a year ago, last December, I believe, uh, we were in Pella and we were looking at education in the state. And so uh, across a, a three-day session, I uh, got to see all the different things that were going on in Pella and representative of the, the state as a whole. Well, one of those days we spent at the Pella Career Academy. And the uh, Pella Career Academy uh, was a, a relatively new building. Uh, it, was, it was built probably two to three years ago, uh, situated right by Pella High School, and uh, intended for high school students of, the, of Pella schools. Uh, and a, a wonderful facility, something that really struck me. And it, it struck me because of the opportunities it provided for these students. And so a, a Pella High School student, uh, primarily the juniors and seniors there, could walk out of the high school, walk 20 feet, and walk into Pella Career Academy. And the Career Ac Academy provided them different areas of focus, strands, uh, they called them, of education. And those strands were aligned directly with uh, the needs of the local industry. So Pella, uh, blessed with a lot of industry. Uh, Vermeer, for example, has a huge welding need. And so they had a, a wonderful welding program. In fact, Vermeer had sent their welding, or had sent a welding instructor to the Pella Career Academy to train these students and show them how, uh, how they expected welding to be done, show them the tricks of the trade. Uh, and they had similar strands looking at engineering. They had a project lead the way that set the stage for the engineering site at, Ver at Vermeer and Pella Window and some of the other industries there. Uh, they had a, a, uh, a top-notch healthcare program. Uh, I remember we got to go into the uh, culinary kitchen and they gave us some of the treats from the culinary kitchen, also very good. Uh, and just a lot of really unique opportunities for these students. And I remember walking out of there and saying, well, that's, that's wonderful for the community of Pella, the students in Pella. And then immediately thinking, well, why, why couldn't we, why shouldn't we have something like that in, in Greene County? Uh, and so came back after that experience and was, was mentioning it to some friends in the area uh, and eventually uh, was asking basically that same question of why couldn't we do it here? And was directed eventually to uh, reach out to, to Sid and uh, Doug McDermott uh, Sid, the current uh, president, obviously, of Home State Bank, Doug, the previous, and Doug also uh, sitting on the Iowa Central uh, Community College Board. Uh, Iowa Central being our, our community college that, that serves our area, obviously. Uh, and uh, sat down with those two, started having the conversation of, of why not, uh, and quickly realized that there was one key person that we were missing in that group, and that was Dan Bennett's, I would say it's weird to call him Dan, it's Mr. Bennett's to me. Uh, but he, he, if anyone knows Iowa Central, it's, it's Mr. Bennett's. Uh, and so got him involved and the four of us started the conversation of what would it, what would it take, what would it look like, and is there even a, a possibility? And there's somebody else here who knows Iowa Central, and that's the president uh -huh. of Iowa Central Community College, Dr. Dan Kinney. 
And Dan, you've had experience directly with career Correct. academies. Tell us yeah. how you well, do them. I, I, the, the thing we got to think about, education's got to change, how, how, we, how we continue to do it. And, you know, I think the concepts of the career academies really came around, I would say, probably four or five years ago, really, in education. Because our students today need a lot more of that hands-on, that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, driving them to the great jobs that we have in our community. So with the career academies, the benefit is, is having those students and being tied with our local high schools, bringing the high school students into those getting them exposed to the career academy, the, or I should say the career strands that are needed. Uh, career academies are really driven by our local communities, our business and industrial training areas of what they need in that workforce. The good thing about it, I think, with the community college is that us hosting those career academies or being part of them is we can change, you know. Today, we may be looking at welding. Tomorrow, we may be looking at something else. We can get in there and, and change those. And I, I think with what Greene County is looking at doing in conjunction with Iowa Central coming on board is amazing. We're going to give our youth an opportunity that a lot of youth in the state of Iowa and really across the nation will not and do not have right now. And we got to continue to expand those. We started our first career academy approximately two years ago. We piloted one up in Eagle Grove and, and, and it really came from our local school districts and our business industry coming to us and saying, how do we train for the future and keeping our youth? We got great jobs in our local communities. We got to keep our youth here. Let's not let them leave us. Let's keep them here. Let's grow. Our, re, our communities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it really is a, it's a partnership, isn't it? It's a complete partnership. Not, it, it, we, you know, today we cannot provide education without partnerships. Yeah. Partners with the business industry, partners with our local community members, partners with our high schools. I mean, it's complete partnerships and that's what's going to grow the state of Iowa. If you sit back and listen to what the governor's saying in Future Ready Iowa, I was just with them earlier this week, Debbie Durham, and how do we grow Iowa? It's the education, a skilled workforce. How do we get that? We're going to have to do that by starting to reach out even younger. I, I mean, you know, part of this, and I, I know, Chris, when you were there, you saw high school students there. Why not middle school students? Why do we not utilize these facilities that we sit in, in the summer? I mean, high schools close down in the summer, but why aren't we expanding that? You know, with Iowa Central being a partner in here, we're going to bring that type of equipment in that we can do, you know, kind of career tracks for middle school students during the summer. Because you also really also hear about when you're out there in education that, you know, they're off for three months and they're not doing anything. And it's that kind of, I, they always call it the brain drum dump. You know, we've got to continue to do that. So with this type of deal and the partnerships that we're going to have with Green County and the local school district, we can continue to expand on that to really expose our youth early on to those careers. You know, they're saying today kids are making career decisions, you know, middle school. And Chris, it, it really isn't just the Green County District. Part of the partnership has to involve a, a wider area, doesn't it? It does, it does. And that was when we first sat down and we first started looking at uh, is this is this feasible in our in our region in our community, and and had uh, uh, were able to talk to Dr. Kinney and learn a little bit more about just the logistics of this. A couple things we learned right away. One, <coughs> we we had the obvious question uh, before we even get into how do we the number of students we need to bring here is why why not have something here in the first place? Why why hadn't that first one? We're a little biased, right, toward our community. Why hadn't that first one been been in Jefferson and and one thing I learned and I think we all learned through this process is that there's there's specific boundaries across the state um, for our community colleges which I, I had never realized and we're right on that boundary with uh, uh, DMAC and so for and I understood exactly so Dr. Kinney when you're looking at building a facility and putting one of these up you got to have it something that's going to stay that's you're going to use your funds you're going to use something that serves all of all of the communities that that you address and so building it in Jefferson would be wonderful for us we'd love it but does it serve a lot of other school districts in your in your region and and we quickly realized looking at that geographic map that it, it did not um, and so that's where we started looking at this might be something that we need to take the lead on and that led to the next question of well if we're going to take the lead what do we need for you to be interested in coming here and it turned into a it turned into a number of students and getting this critical mass of students who can come up here 
Uh, and that's where we started reaching out. And that's where we reached out to, to our administration and, and Tim Christensen with uh, our, our superintendent. And uh, he got involved and helped us reach out to, to uh, school districts within a 30 mile radius. And I think you've well, seen that that works well. And it does. And it's very difficult for us to come and just build a facility. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and, and where this partnership I think is, is so unique is it's really, it, it's community driven. So often it's educational driven. Well, this is community driven, which really excited me to have that opportunity. See, there's a community that says, hey, we can grow and we're going to grow. And this is what we're going to do by putting up the facility and, and, and really almost inviting us in to provide the education. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sid, you're not mm -hmm. only president of Home State Bank, you're also president of Green County Development Corporation, Correct. and you're well aware of what this could do <coughs> for development here in this area. Why don't you visit with us a little bit about that partnership? Well, uh, you know, Chris said that Pella's blessed, well, so is Green County. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, uh, for a county of 9,000 people, we have an extraordinary amount of manufacturing. And uh, so we have a lot of terrific jobs, and the other thing we're blessed with is they're all growing and that creates challenges at the same time. Uh, but they are growing and, and they need a skilled workforce and that buzzword skilled workforce development that Dr. Kenny used and that the governor used, is, that fits perfect with Greene County. And so as we started looking at and talking to, we've been around to some of the industries, we've been asking their opinions, we've been talking to John Deere, we've been talking to the Reader family and the Case IH dealership and and uh, what are their needs? You know, we've been at Scranton Manufacturing, we've been at Powerlift, we've just been out talking to the industry. There's a definite need of the exact direction that we're trying to head with this. And so we started talking about these strands of education, and uh, Chris and I can talk about these together a little bit, but advanced manufacturing is a key word. And what we're finding out as we go to the manufacturers is the technology behind the manufacturing process is quickly changing. And the sensors that are used and the electronic programming that's used for the mechanical things that used to happen that now <coughs> happen electronically uh, is a whole new world. And we're really in the early stages of that whole new world. So they have a workforce that needs to be continued to raise their skill sets and then for us to be able to have a system that would funnel students out of an academy here in Greene County that could facilitate their young uh, growth and their employee base would really be outstanding. So that advanced manufacturing piece here for our local industries is really powerful and really needed. And uh, so that's kind of, kind of the part about those local industries. And there's also opportunities with industries that aren't here today. And, Chris, I know is yeah, Chris. That's in <clears throat> that's in your wheelhouse. Uh, the things that you're involved in personally. Yeah, and so I uh, one of the most exciting things is we've had all these conversations and and looked at and gone from what was this almost a dream of getting an Iowa Central presence here to what we seem is a, what seems to be a a very real possibility. Uh, is the opportunities and the possibilities that creates this new partnership that we're going to have locally. And a, a wonderful case in point uh, is conversations I've had, <coughs> excuse me, uh, conversations I've had with a, a software development firm in, uh, in Des Moines, with an office of, uh, in Des Moines. Uh, <coughs> I got to know the, uh, the management of this firm. Uh, from some designs that I had done. My, my day job is an uh, engineering designer, do mechanical, electrical uh, designs for, for new, new construction and renovation. And uh, we had done the, uh, the design for this new office for a company that came into Des Moines, a uh, company based in Ohio. They'd gone to, uh, expanded to Michigan and then out to Palo Alto and the Silicon Valley, and then they came to Des Moines because uh, there, there uh, there's a lot of exciting things going on in, in Des Moines as well and uh, came in a couple years ago, uh, built out a new beautiful office downtown Des Moines uh, and have had tremendous success. Uh, filled that up with employees and uh, looking to grow uh, again in Des Moines. And so I was speaking with the, uh, the, the local management saying, well, you've, you've, you've knocked it out of the park, what's next? And I remember him saying, well, I think we're gonna expand into rural Iowa. And I said, 
tell me more. <laughs> tell me more about this. And uh, <clears throat> he started telling me his, his business plan, really. Uh, and he believes that he has a competitive advantage if he comes to rural Iowa. Uh, and this is a company that's, that's doing cutting edge software development. They're, they're doing the uh, software behind autonomous vehicles. They're doing uh, software for other software companies in the background. Uh, so, so really fascinating work that they do. Uh, and they're expending a lot of their resources on their new hires and their training. And so when you look out at the Silicon Valley in uh, Palo Alto, uh, they're, they're hiring someone for six figures easily, well into the six figures. And then they're spending another six months uh, plus training them and $50,000 plus in training costs on top of that. And so uh, this, uh, the individual believes uh, that he can create the same quality of, uh, of a software developer through a partnership with a local school district. We're lucky, he's, he's biased toward Iowa as well. He's a, he's a small town Iowa guy originally and got to move back when they, when they brought this to Des Moines. Uh, and he wants to find a partner, a K-12 school, a post-secondary school or a post-secondary institution, so uh, preferably a community college, to create this partnership and in essence create a, an IT training pipeline. And so he's he's telling me all of this, and and as you can imagine, I'm I'm eating it up. I think this is this is fantastic, and so I, I immediately said, well, why not Jefferson, Iowa? And uh, and he said, well, do you guys have a uh, a community college? And I said, this was about six months ago. I said, well, not yet, but we just so happen to be having a few conversations about bringing something down to to uh, Green County, and. Uh, we uh, filled him in at that point, and he's been watching as all of this has been progressing, and they're they're excited about what's going on, and they're they're watching all of this closely, and and as you can imagine, they've got a lot of a lot of uh, small towns that are really pushing to have them expand there, and so. Uh, out of the 20 to 25 he's had conversations with, he's told me that uh, Jefferson's uh, his number one pick. And so uh, obviously it's contingent on getting the getting that community college presence and having that kind of ability to create that training pipeline. But it's a it's a, a anecdote to a bigger picture of the uh, the opportunities that we have when we have this unique partnership that we want to bring to our community. Yeah, that's very exciting. And it holds <laughs> lots of promise for mm -hmm. us. Sid, what about Green County's biggest industry? Yeah. Um, obviously, our biggest industry, industry is agriculture. It always will be. And uh, so we need to somehow really look at what the needs of that industry are. And it's a little bit like the manufacturing industry. The technology that goes on in today's equipment and inside of those cabs and those tractor cabs and the combines, um, the high-tech uh, systems and data systems that are included in those are incredible. The challenge is, as we talk to John Deere and as we talk to the Reader family at Case IH, is the certified repair people. And uh, so there's, an, there's a, a need for the IT development and certification of young people to take care of, of that industry. And we found out in talking to John Deere that they have two educational facilities in the Midwest. One is in a little town of Calamar, Iowa, northeast Iowa. Uh, with an affiliation in a, with a junior college there. The other one is in Milford, Nebraska. But there's a huge shortage. And um, we just think that there's the possibility, and Dr. Kenny thinks there's a possibility of including that as one of our strands here. It not only just affects, uh, and the software that Chris mentioned, not only affects today's production, but Precision farming is headed in a direction that's only re going to require more technology as we think about water quality, as we think about how we apply our fertilizer and our chemicals, as we think about uh, the most efficient way to farm those acres uh, to create the most net income opportunities for those people. Um, IT is just a huge part of it and is going to play more and more into that role. And um, we also feel that there's a, there's a little succession piece in agriculture here. And if we can provide these kinds of off-farm opportunities for employment, uh, maybe we could have more people like Chris and his family that uh, telecommute part of their life, uh, stay home and live on the farm and have that opportunity to 
be a part of that farm family and the succession within that farm family. So that's a really exciting piece that kind of comes along with this, but really could be one of the most important smaller pieces. Doesn't affect everybody, but could certainly affect a lot of producers here in Greene County. We, we probably can't, can't mention everything every possible strand because we don't know what's going to be there five years from now but there are some others well i mean that's that's the thing is we're building something for the future i mean five years down the road things are going to change and, and having that ability to to adapt and i think that's where the community college system and, and why you know chris you talked about businesses and i asked why you know do you have a local community college well you know honestly 70 percent of the jobs in rural america right now are only requiring a certificate or two-year degree and those are being produced by the community colleges out there and that ability for us to change kind of on the fly and make those ad ad adapt to different things I mean you think about hospitality and in restaurant management I mean you've got a lot of that happening you know in in your region itself so we can add that in there but I think one is that we've got to talk about medical I mean, you think about it. Uh, we need to continue to support or, you know, to, to attract young doctors into the careers and, and bringing them back to, you know, to Iowa and to rural Iowa. But, you know, nurses, I, I mean, unfortunately, we do have an aging generation that's out there. Yes. And, and we've got to continue to, to build on that, too. But, you know, where does it stop? I mean, I don't think it ever will. I, I mean, and that's where, you know, you talk about everything we kind of talk about is IT. You know, a lot of our facilities were built. You, you know, over 50 years ago, nobody thought about the robotics, the technology and things like that. And, and, you know, recently there was an article in the Des Moines Register about, you know, how education has to change and we've got to get that technology in there. So with this type of a new facility and, and the partnership is it, making sure that we can incorporate that kind of stuff into there. So our young students are, are getting that because there are amazing careers in our in our regional communities. Well, Chris, that the idea of the of the. Career Academy, the Regional Academy, dovetails very well with another educational improvement project that's been going on here now, <coughs> at least in, in concept, mm -hmm. for a couple of years. Uh, do you want to get into that part about yeah. the, the, how it dovetails with our own community school district? Mm -hmm. And so we, and as, as you can imagine, uh, we're excited about this idea of a career academy, and we're 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 fully on board. I think it's an amazing opportunity to to bring Dr. Kinney and Iowa Central and their their staff down here, and so it gets into the the nuts and bolts a little bit of how do we how do we do that? And we realize that this is going to be something that we need to take the lead on, uh, and very comfortable and very excited about the opportunity in doing so. But how how can we do it? How does it fit into that bigger picture? And so we're, we're all aware we've had a couple school bonds that we attempted and uh, haven't got it passed for the past two times. And so maybe this is an opportunity to take a big step back and look at the big picture and see how this all fits together. And so understanding first what we had attempted to do in those previous school bonds. Uh, in essence, we were taking the existing high school, retrofitting it and making it a middle school and then adding new square footage, a new high school that we had just attached to that building. And so we were uh, building a new high school previously. That was, that was the referendum. Uh, and then the, the modifications to the existing to make it middle, a middle school. Well, what if instead of building a new high school and attaching it to the existing, what if we step back and we look at how do we make this career academy and that alignment with our high school and the career academy really work well? And one of the pieces with that career academy we talked about is where, what makes sense for where it would go. And this is something, uh, we're excited about it. We want to show off this partnership and we think that no better place to, to show this partnership and the importance of education to our community than, than right at that Highway 30, Highway 4 in that, in that area. Uh, somewhere there's going to be a lot of traffic. We can, we can put those, the, the symbols for both the institutions right there. And, and if that makes sense for the career academy, what about having that high school right there next to it? Similar to what Pella had done, where you've got that close-knit alignment, you walk out of the high school, you walk right into that career academy, and you just align those institutions. And if we were doing that high school before, 
well, let's look at doing it again here. Uh, but let's take that square footage and, and move it potentially to a new location. Still do the retrofit to the high school, make it a middle school. Uh, we do have very good facilities at our high school, especially in our, our uh, uh, industrial arts and the, the way we train. And so now we have a, a great opportunity for middle school, like you mentioned, Dr. Kinney, uh, to give them some of the facilities and start that training at an earlier age for the, the kids who are interested in exploring it and, and think that might be a, a, a path for them. And so it all started to, to, to make sense um, in how it might fit together and how it might play out. Um, and the, the next piece that we wanted to make sure we were cognizant of was, is this the right thing for the, the future? And, and are we thinking about where we're going to go for this? And then eventually down the road, there's going to be another bond referendum. And so let's make sure that we, we set the stage. And the nice thing about potentially going to that, that Highway 4, Highway 30 intersection um, and that area there is that we can think about this not as just a high school and a career academy, but as an entire eventual campus where if that next project down the road is we, we add the new middle school, well, that can go right next to it. And then eventually, if we look at adding uh, or replacing athletic facilities, let's get enough so it can fit there. And so a part of this has to be we're thinking, we're thinking toward the future through all of this. One with the educational opportunities, but two with the facilities and what our facilities not, not just look like today, next year, five years, but 10, 20, and 30 years down the road and giving ourselves the opportunity. And so that's something that seemed to resonate when we talked about it, and as we've talked to, to people about it, it really, really seemed to resonate too, the, the, the eye toward the future and setting the stage for how we can do this. Well, what about location? You mentioned uh, out somewhere near the 430 uh, uh, corner out there. Anything more specific about that? Well, we have had some conversations with the landowners to, to see their level of interest, and and I think all of them kind of get excited about this idea. They, they really do. Uh, specifically, when you just look at the layout here, um, there is a piece of land there that makes the most sense. And it is the, it's the property that's owned by the Brevard family. It lays just west of AAI. There's approximately 80 acres in that piece. So when you think about this idea of a campus and the future, um, it takes real estate. You know, obviously our existing facilities, there's not enough real estate there to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. So as we look at that piece of land, and so we've had some great conversation with the Brevard family. They have an interest, and uh, we're hopeful, and they're hopeful, that we can make this work, that we can somehow come together. It's another one of those partnerships that you yes. talk about, uh, and make that be a reality. From a city's perspective, it's the right piece. We have just put through a new sanitary sewer system and water, water lines up to that part of the community. That piece of land also has a natural drainage to it for surface water. And so the stormwater sewer uh, drainage piece of that it can be handled in a very natural way with detent detention ponds and overflow. So it is kind of the right location. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, those landowners that. and us all are, are interested. Sorry to interrupt. You've got the, the recently redone Central Avenue on the south side. Correct. One of the big things we hear out in that area is we don't want our students crossing Highway 30. And we, we agree. Mm -hmm. And so now you can look at, well, maybe the access to it is off Central <coughs> Ave. And mm -hmm. then we don't even need to send students out onto Highway 30. Yeah. And so it hits that safety component, which is a critical piece as well. And even the, even the bike paths that the city are working on. They're looking at that. They're mm -hmm. trying to figure, you know, the UP's a danger zone. Yeah. And how do we protect that? How, how do we make ways around that? We obviously have our own overpass, tremendous advantage, but is there a way to even create a pedestrian overpass possibly? And how could that happen? And could our trail system for our students tie into that and uh, make that a possibility? And someday if these youth fields would be located in that area of the community, and uh, so all of those things tie together. It's, it's all just a big part of the puzzle. It's going to take money. <laughs> this is true, uh, huh? Let's, let's talk a little <laughs> bit about that. That's the, that's mm -hmm. the one thing that's going to grab, mm -hmm. in addition to the mm -hmm. excitement of the, of the concept, mm -hmm. there's the, how do you get it done? Sid, can you talk about that? Well, if you kind of talk in, <clears throat> in numbers that we were using before, the, initial, the bond issue before in round numbers was about $20 million. And um, 
That is a, a big bite to have for our taxpayers and we understand that. A portion of that, around four million or some, some dollar amount like that, was for a uh, competitive gymnasium and, it, and uh, exercise facilities there for our students and obviously they have physical education programs that happen there as long with, along with the competition that happens at a high school level. And that was something that our taxpayers were kind of having a problem with the last time. So we started to look at how do we start to form these partnerships? And are there partnerships within our community that uh, can help with this, uh, this financing piece of really moving towards and being able to afford this career academy along with? So the, the $4 million we got to thinking and, and uh, most of our community is well aware of Grow Green County and, and the, the uh, entity that receives um, the revenue sharing from the casino and they receive that on an annual basis. And knowing a lot of those people, I know they were really looking for a project that could make a long-term difference and, and how they could really add some value to this community. And so Chris and I had the opportunity to sit down. Rick, obviously you're on that board uh, with several others and we had a chance to just tell this story a little bit and see what level of interest they may have. Could they take a portion of that over the period of the bond issue and remove it out of the bond issue and we have a different revenue source completely other than the taxpayer to support that. At the same time then, if we can take that four or five million out, can we replace that with the community college expense and build that facility? So now we've uh, not only handled the gymnasium, we also want to think about our performing arts and that part of the education here in Greene County has always been a very balanced uh, part of that education and Chris I know enjoyed that and our kids enjoyed that having that balance and so uh, if we can redirect some of that if we can form some private partnerships <coughs> with entities like that and uh, even with our corporations as we've been talking to some of our corporations and I had the chance here a few weeks ago to visit with Mylan Kuzarak, who's the CEO of Landis. And I explained to him, I told him, I want to tell you this story, you know, and I realize you're in a lot of counties, you're in a lot of communities, and everybody's asking for money. And, uh, but is there a way for you guys to participate in this some way? And he said, you know, Sid, I think this is a different project than most. And uh, he said, this truly could affect our entire trade territory. And the academy piece of this really makes it unique. The idea that you're looking at seven other school systems that surround this one uh, really touches so much of our trade territory, we'd like to learn more. And so we have another meeting coming up even this afternoon with Landis and, and uh, Dr. Kenny is gonna talk about their ability to provide these strands of education that really benefit agriculture. So if we can benefit that company we're obviously going to benefit our, our uh, many other manufacturers and maybe we can find some other partnerships along the way here to help defray some of this cost away from our taxpayer. So that all takes time, doesn't happen overnight, uh, but it's something we're really working towards trying to be a part of. Yeah. Dr. Kinney, we, the bond issue would, would, under this proposal, would build the building, mm -hmm. the regional academy then that's where Iowa Central steps in and takes it from there. Right? Yeah, that's where we, you, you know, having that space and then the ability for the programs we, we put into there, then we bring the equipment in, you know, and, and continue to keep it updated. And it's worked out well. Uh, we, we've done that with our other career academy and then staffing itself. Uh, you know, we'll be looking, well, I, we'll have to put some teachers down here. I'll put an, uh, an individual down here uh, that we kind of call a, a work-based learning uh, in working with the local business and industries, the needs out there, making sure what we're doing in the classroom is supporting the needs that they have out there within the region itself. And they work very closely. They're kind of that they're that key between work, the workforce, uh, or I should say the employers, the business industry, and in the educational side of the house that so we're tying all that together. So we'll provide all that uh, through, um, you know, through Iowa Central Community College. Rick, the one other um, the partnership that we've been having some discussion with is our county, and it's the Board of Supervisors, and, and uh, we've told them the story, and 
and uh, you know they always have to be careful on how they use the their tax dollars and and what they support and but as they listen to this story they they certainly want to be a part of this too it it uh, is very beneficial to our to the Peyton Dan school system that's in Green County uh, we've got a great relationship with those two schools today and and we share those high school classes and we do a lot of education for their high school students and so they certainly would as well benefit from that pipeline that Chris talks about to have straight into that junior college and then into local agriculture or those local manufacturers so um, the county's wanting to know where they can fit in and what piece of this maybe they could be helpful with and we don't have all those things figured out yet but it's uh, refreshing to know that we have that kind of support uh, for this project. And one of the other dollars and cents items I know we had uh, sat down with, with Dr. Kenny early in this process just to understand uh, what's something or how can we show the the interest the passion you have for this project because uh, we've we've gotten to talk with you a lot and we've we've seen it uh, very evidently and so what type of a, a uh, operational agreement can we create or something just to show that the you are interested in this and yes. the longevity of it and so uh, if you want to talk about that yeah we, we talked about what we would do is sign a, a long-term uh, lease for that piece of equipment, that, that, I should say that, that part of the building itself that, that we'd be paying rent on, making sure they cover the overheads and, you know, and definitely the equipment itself. So, you know, we're definitely into it. Uh, you know, we've talked 10, 15, 20 years. I mean, throw it out there, I'm ready to go. I, I mean, we're excited about this opportunity just to continue to expand what we're doing within, you know, just Iowa Central, but, you know, to help support Iowa and, and definitely Greene County when it comes to that. I think there's even other opportunities, you know, the ability to do non-credit stuff in the evenings there for adult learners. You know, we talked a little bit about the youth, uh, the current employees, you know, be able in the evenings to, uh, you know, if they need additional welders or want to retrain or recertify people, the ability to use that facility for us to do that here rather than doing it back in Fort Dodge, we can do it here for the local businesses. But I think the other thing is that the non-credit side of the house, the adult learning, what else can we do? I mean, the options are there. I mean, it is endless of what we can do with something like this type of a facility. Yeah, that sounds terrific. Well, are there, are there other advantages for our students in connection <laughs> with the regional academy? What well, one of, the, one of the burdens that our students are are experiencing today is a lot of them believe they need a four-year education and the cost of those four-year educations have really become a burden and we have students that are graduating out of colleges yes. they don't have a skilled workforce education mm -hmm. they have a great education but they are really struggling by the time they now have a car payment and insurance and they have a place they need to rent and uh, now I have these student loans that kick in and how do I service all of that? So the cost of education is a critical component and we really see the savings in well, that and Dr. Kenny, you can sure talk to that. The number one debt in America right now you'd think be credit card, student loan debt. Really? I mean it's hit trillions and what, one of the things is the community colleges in Iowa, we even did a study, how do you, how do you reduce that? Because I think that is a very key component out there. But one, I think this really helped, uh, you know, can help e e even with this, the academy is the ability for students to take college credit in high school. On these different strands, depends on which one they'd be involved with. I mean, it's anywhere from 14 hours to 21 college hours each year. So you, you start expanding that on two years and other classes that they can take or online or, or different things like that. Because we already do some classes with our local school districts, but you start doing that. We have a, a number of students that graduate the week before from the Iowa Central Community College, then they get their high school diploma. You'd be amazed at how many students are continuing or, or get that opportunity. And that's through having the ability to take these college classes through these type of career academies. Now, some don't. Uh, you know, I've recently had a daughter that had graduated high school and uh, she left high school with 40 hours. You know, on average, our high school students are coming out with approximately 20 to 24 hours. And, you know, you look at cost savings on that, that's approximately 65000 or 65000 $6,500 right off the bat of savings that we're already providing to our youth. Because you're right, I mean, student loan debt. Uh, you know, I graduated a number of years ago, but I know people 
who are still just finishing up paying off their student loan debt. You know, Chris, you're a lot younger than I am, and you probably know a lot more than I do, but you know, we got we to gotta get away from that. And I think with this opportunity, you provide your youth a whole nother option. Now, the big thing about the career academies is, number one, is the ability to graduate. Now, they also, you can transfer these hours. I, I mean, you know, take the classes and go on to an Iowa, Iowa State University. I had to go both between you two, because I know one <laughs> Iowa, one Iowa State. So, uh, in regards to that, yeah. Yes, uh, but the other one is, you know, Billy goes straight to the workforce. We're providing him with a skill right there that one of your local businesses can hire him right out of high school after they've completed one of the strands within that. So there are a lot of opportunities that this academy provides to our, our, our uh, local uh, youth. Well, I see it's, it's, there's a spectrum to it. I mean, we've got this great new apprenticeship program that yes. we're doing, right? And that's, if someone knows where they want to be, yep. what they want to do, you can get them started, get them started early and get that training. You've got the career academy for uh, the, the later high school. They can go in and they find and they decide by their sophomore, junior year, I'm, I'm going to do welding. I'm going to do advanced manufacturing. Yep. They can get in there and knock out a vast majority of that. But it's also you, 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 you uh, hinted at it, there's, there's an exploratory piece too. Yes. And so I, I went through and did the engineering program at Iowa State. Well, a big piece of that was the, uh, the construction program I did as a high school senior mm -hmm. with Mr. Bennett's. Yeah. And I use that every day in, in the, the career that I've gone into and the knowledge I gained there. And so there's an opportunity for the, the students who want to go to a four-year institution, but now they have this, this incredible facility, potentially this incredible facility, that they can go and explore and see what it's like to do software development, and they can see what it's like to do uh, advanced manufacturing and they might have a much better idea when they go to that four-year institution of what they are and what they maybe aren't interested in. Right. And so there's a huge spectrum. That's I think in some of, a lot of that debt comes from is those students that switch. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. four years, you know, there are a lot of degrees still be done four years, but on average, a college or a high school student or coming out or coming into college changes their major six times wow. on yeah, average. Right. Is that right? You know, I've got one of those daughters in school. <laughs> <laughs> so she may be professional students, what I'm kind of wondering some days. So it's, it's good for kids. It's, oh. it's good for local employers. It's good for your institution. Good for parents who pay it. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Adult what's, education. What's Adult not, education. What's not to like? <laughs> I, I mean, it's great for everybody. What's the next step? What, what can we do? What can the community do? at this point besides watch our pretty faces on this on this video <laughs> well we uh, we Sid and I have, have been able to go and talk to a lot of a lot of groups uh, and we enjoy it and we love we we plan on continuing to do that but we know we can't get to everybody in this community and we want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to weigh in this is this is very much a, a grassroots effort, a community-led initiative. And it's critical that people have the opportunity in Greene County to give feedback and to hear this story and to understand what we're trying to do. Uh, because as much as we talk about it and as excited as we get about it, if we can't get 60% of people to agree with us, we, don't, we lose this opportunity. And so we we're doing this right here with the, the hope that someone's watching us right now. Uh, and and hearing about it and now uh, has the opportunity to talk about it and to uh, give some of that feedback. Uh, we have an architecture firm, the school hired an architecture firm uh, to help through this process to facilitate. Uh, they are not drawing right now because they're waiting to hear and making sure that this makes sense for the community, that it is going to get that grassroots level of support. And so right now we, we are listening and we want to make sure that what we think makes a lot of sense uh, does make sense to the community at large. Uh, and then eventually, uh, once we have as many of these small group meetings uh, and get as much information and feedback as we can from that, we, we do plan on hosting some bigger town hall style meetings for people to, to come and, and to uh, again hear the story and make sure that everybody uh, has this opportunity to hear, understand, ask questions, um, and then take all of that. There's going to be a lot of information that comes in and, and uh, work with the, the architecture firm and their expertise to 
bring it together and uh, understand what the pricing is going to be. Get into some of the more specifics and to, to start putting together something uh, for an eventual bond referendum date. Uh, we're looking at April 3rd, uh, and that's one thing. Uh, it's it's going to be fast, uh, but we also think this is an opportunity we need to move quickly on. I, uh, Dr. Kenny, you've uh, you've you've shown how excited you are to come down here. And I'm we ready to move here. I know. <laughs> I mean, just sitting around listening today. I mean, it is exciting because. We do. Sid, you're 100% right. we got to build it and, and to continue track. And, and it's just to sit here and be involved with it. I know, you know from the standpoint as Iowa Central President, I'm really excited about the educational component that we can add to this. But just sitting here listening to splash parks and, and different things, like, I'm ready to move here, so let's go look for houses after this. Okay, we can do that. Okay, can do that. Just a 45-minute commute to work, that's not bad because that's what happens in cities. You can telecommute part of that. Well, yeah, that's true. I can telecommute. Yeah. So I got Doug here. So yeah. So <laughs> yeah. no, I'm ready to move here. So no, you guys do. You know, just the partnerships. Everything we keep talking about has been the partnerships, and and that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess in closing, as what we need is people to vote yes, uh -huh. and uh, yeah. just to get out and and make sure that uh, what you've heard in these uh, nice small meetings that we've hopefully extended to a lot of homes and a lot of small businesses to. Yeah to be participant and to be a, a heavy participant when it comes time to vote and make sure you tell your neighbors and your friends and everybody how important it is and and by the time we hold the town hall meetings hopefully everyone has had a chance to ask every question they can think of and and our design committee with the architectural firm has been able to pull that all together and and design what is the right size for us. Well, I, I'm open to f of calls in order to, to come down here for that. I mean, if, if individuals have questions a little bit more about the career academies, the strands and stuff more in depth, mm -hmm. you know, feel free to contact me by email, phone, or I can come down here and eat lunch. I like to, I have to eat yeah. sometimes so I can run down here and we do a luncheon every once in a while. So. We appreciate your interest and your, and your support on this. It's great to have, to have the college have our back on this thing. Yeah, I'm just excited of what you guys are doing. I think I've said this before is, I mean, I've not been into a place that the community approached the college. And I think that's what's impressive about this project is, you know, the dream of, well, started with you, ended up attaching, you know, three others came involved with it. And now it just continues to grow. So that's what I think is a, a neat opportunity that you guys have here. Yeah. Well, we'll try to keep the ball rolling. We'll, we'll hope you folks want to give us some feedback. And uh, you'll be hearing more about it in the, in the weeks and months to come. Thanks very much for listening. And we're going to sign off. Okay. Thank you, Rick, Thank for you. being our moderator. We appreciate it.